Hello, everyone. Thank you, James, first of all, for a very uh, uh, personal. Uh, by the way, I, I can't take that much spice anymore. <laughs> Being an architect for long, I have this all sorts. Anyway, uh, and a very thorough uh, reading of our work. And it's really, really special, actually, to come back here. And in fact, the league uh, has been like almost like a really a homecoming because it was uh, 11 years, I think, ago. Uh, we had a first, I had a first lecture together with you, the young architects. Uh, um, without further ado, I mean, we'll chat more, so I'll just go through um, images and uh, talk about our work. Um, this image uh, shows our, um, this, actually this line is uh, with James together, and from uh, 2003, so it actually covers uh, until end of last year, uh, first seven years of our work, and it's in, in chronology and also in scale. And it's, as you can see, it's pretty well spread out, meaning that we've been doing quite consistent amount of work and also quite consistently um, um, uh, the, uh, amount of interest in various scales, so from very small to big, and it always uh, has been that way. Okay, lastly, uh, I'll go to the Korean Pavilion. It's part of this sort of collective intimacy uh, investigation. The Korean Pavilion was interesting because um, we, it, was, it was a competition, but also, you know, we know that world population has grown uh, four times over the last hundred years. <coughs> Beginning of Expo was maybe 50 countries, uh, turn of the century. And but also coincide, the uh, number of countries has grown uh, quad quadruple, same proportion. Um, and it's, it's interesting that and that means that three quarter of this uh, world uh, somehow uh, they have to I invent or develop this new identity as a sort of a na nation state as a coll collective. Um, so in a way, the beginning of the expo was about this vernacular architect meets this high tech, you know, Crystal Palace. But now, become everybody somehow like address this uh, national identity through this modern building, and which is uh, I think is totally hopeless and impossible. So this was a uh, Korea was also interesting because I mean these, all the three quarter of this number of country in the world is that they in a way this post colonial sort of uh, uh, situation that they have to sort of escape this. Uh, and this was when Korea came uh, after 1900 appearance at uh, the Japanese uh, colonization time. It's interesting that it come out as this a really strong uh, abstract uh, newness building. And then also we go back to past and you know, 67. And this was also when we were really like identity crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and then this comes. And it was an interesting moment when I discovered it was by the time when I started to come to Korea, this was a movie that came, uh, Khan Best Director Award, about this 19th century painter. And the same actor uh, was in this old boy movie you, some of you saw uh, next year, and he got an even bigger prize. Uh, and basically, we kind of made a big leap, uh, especially this actor. And it used to be this, uh, you know, this double gay situation of this post-colonial you know, identity that we kind of have to like sell this past to be uh, recognized. And uh, in a way, I mean, they're great movies, though, but uh, it was really the uh, what we thought. And then uh, somehow, but we have this, you know, we kind of gone beyond this sort of calm, you know, this uh, hermit kingdom, agrarian uh, the culture, but. It become probably the most urban and of course um, lots of a lot more complex stories. So of course after that it, all the psycho killer movies and so on came. And, you know I think it's very uh, becoming interesting. So you know we wanted to kind of get over this kind of a post fan dance uh, identity. And then another thing that really governs this Asian condition is that because of this uh, colossal amount of built work, it's usually this is a kind of the default, the bigger, faster, and cheaper condition. And uh, Unsurprisingly, the site was given to us was the uh, biggest site in Expo. We're a small country, so somehow we have to build, present ourselves as this big uh, building. <laughs> but also, uh, second after, uh, end of second after Chinese pavilion. But also, we came the latest exception of American pavilion um, because uh, for some political reason. So, um, but in a way, we took this condition as a positive thing that it's actually. Uh, I know it's, uh, I don't want to do this fast thing again, but it, one benefit was actually we knew what other project will come through internet because all the other country already selected the design. As you can see, uh, there are uh, this um, thing, and then there's, uh, there's an upside down uh, Saudi Arabia, and then there's another one. And the, where the thing is taken is this big Independence Day also UFO, uh, which is beautiful corner building. 
So uh, somehow we're surrounded by this sort of uh, uh, this uh, circular shaped object. So we knew that we'll avoid that definitely. So that was a benefit. And then the cheaper condition was also interesting because you know mostly with this Venturian sense, this decorated shed and dug uh, all over again because uh, 49 countries built their own pavilion, including Korea, design. But then rest of the 140 countries design uh, only the sort of the package because they rented this uh, uh, warehouse. But uh, we did this through internet research that this is a um, dollar per square meter for Korean pavilion compared to the, probably the maximum in Saudi Arabia. And it's about six times uh, almost. And I was actually quite shocked by Spain being the cheaper. But then we uh, further extensive research. Actually, Korea had a, in terms of cons architecture construction price alone, uh, we're actually uh, half of it. And I think Spain did a stunning job, and you know, and also exhibition was very uh, efficient. But you also you can see the USA is like also similar proportion like Korea. That means a lot of other things: exhibition, media, entertainment. And Korea was also this 15 mi movie with this pasta was probably cost like uh, one third of it, something. Mm -hmm. So we are actually in the most uh, kind of impossible, uh, in a way, situation, which we figure later. So in a way, we have to come up with this uh, icon, which is uh, acceptable by 50, other, 50 million other Korean uh, people, but somehow we have to deliver in a very uh, economical way. So we took its Korea as this sort of a unique peninsula culture, which kind of converges many things. But one of the uh, icon we picked was something that we are very proud of, is this uh, alphabet that was developed by King 600 years ago. And it was actually very simple geometric, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and circle, which you can find in a, uh, Roman alphabet, also Arabic numbers and so on. So it almost, and then we sort of call it a sign, creating a space, but it's actually, the building can be also completely read as a, mostly read as a most utilitarian organization, almost most functional this way. So diagonal being the escalator, in and out, and fire stairs and so on. And also this, uh, what we call this Hangul, Korean alphabet pixels. It was our way to uh, use this uh, digital technology in a, uh, a benefit from it because there used to be time that you have to make a lot of repetitions to make it economical, but the CNC, there are 40,000 panels and it could be made all unique and uh, not so much more different from uh, um, you know, re repetition. We just have to draw uh, 40,000 uh, panels. So that was a lot of And nighttime also it glows and sort of highlight different alphabet characters and so on. But also um, the white color is important because we tend to present ourselves as this white, pure people. Probably the result of this uh, Confucius, but also so many uh, the wrenching history of these uh, invasions and so on. So we always maintain that. But in fact, we are actually very complex in that. And that is contrasted by this very colorful side, which is a shamanistic and also a Buddhist tradition. So those things always have been this sort of a dichotomy. And this Kang Yip Chung is an artist that I admire, which I uh, didn't know personally. We invited him uh, during the competition, because I, I thought uh, he should do something. He's known for this uh, collective painting that's made of many, like as many as 100,000 of them by different children. Sometimes he does it all by himself also, which is very impressive. Anyway, he wrote this very interesting poems. Uh, I probably don't have time to get to, but he would just, um, and he'd print it. And uh, also one of, uh, so in a way it has this sort of a reaction to this contemporary Korean sort of a quality, urban, but also kind of touches on this. And then this sustainability idea, which is kind of observed, so which we thought is cheaper, cheapest condition was quite relevant challenge for this six months uh, building an entire city and talking about sustainability. So um, he come up with this nice idea of this Berlin Wall idea that he, after that you take down and actually become souvenirs and he was willing to sign a lot of it so that it will be given to a charity organization which we're working on now. And then, the, and so in a way the ringdom idea is similar. They, this thousand ringdom goes, uh, hula hoop goes back to uh, hula hoop uh, with some special memory to it. And then uh, most importantly the building is actually floating. So. Um, uh, exhibition is upstairs, uh, which we don't really have anything to do with. We just give them this nice uh, circular 
uh, uh, movement. They can do it. And then the, this is a Huangpu Riverside, which we suggested as a uh, Korean restaurant, which is a very important company. And uh, viewing that also, because it has a nice, uh, but we know that the other building all has this um, you know, bubble shape, and it's good for it. except the Saudi Arabia. So um, this is a way to the restaurant. And top level is the, the office and so on. And this is from Green Deck. And then this collective living room idea come in. And Korea, as I said, is through this peninsula history, we've been actually kind of like a living room from different other uh, countries, <laughs> so, whether good or bad. And um, in a way, Japan being very strong identity and autonomous island. And you can see the Japan here, the site plan is very, kind of uh, characterize that. And then we come up with these nine different um, sort of entryway to get in. And then it, we create this sort of open space, seven meter tall and the size of two thirds of the soccer field. And we manage that uh, soul can be shipped uh, as a one to 300 uh, reduction, including some portion of the river and the mountain because that's what makes, I think, so very unique, high mountains. And then um, one knows that uh, Expo is about waiting for three hours just to see the 30 minute really uh, disappointing uh, inside. <laughs> so we create this sort of accommodating uh, resting area. It was also very hot most of the times. Sometimes waterfalls and, uh, and then this uh, mountain becomes like the seating area. And they were actually, the whole time, they were performing every hour, uh, really like this, almost this uh, superhuman um, b-boys and traditional dancers. So this is how they're waiting. In a way, also, this is sort of this, um, what happens in this, my region, this uh, nice uh, infrastructure uh, becomes this uh, happy, uh, almost this improvised uh, power-like condition. Again, the people clad it uh, image. Yeah, so uh, I think this is the end image actually, the movie. And I, I think I'll end this, uh, yeah. I think I went a little bit long. But.